Hi guys, just doing a video from our friends at Global Aviation Products. Uh, Errol is the Australian sling distributor. He's got a quick build center, he operates a flying school. So Errol has given a talk on the sling high wing, which is coming into Australia. He's currently got the first quick build, which he's putting together now. And he's also gonna talk about other sling products. So uh, sit back, relax, and uh, hear about all things sling. Some of, some of you, uh, I think most of you are sling owners <laughs> and some prospective owners and whatever, you know. But yeah, thanks thanks for, for popping in. Um, I thought we will just go down our presentation. Uh, I worked right through a night on this. Really, it was so much work. Mike and James, some of you guys have met them. They are very, very adventurous. And I think in a way that's probably what has put sling on the map. Uh, just the videos and all the adventures that they've been doing has really put the brand out there. And um, we've now been in Australia for uh, 10 years um, and Slings has, has really taken off here. So we, we're very thankful that it was so good. Um, you know, people always sort of tend to ask what, what makes a good aircraft? You know, what, what, what will make the perfect you know, the tick list. I had a customer that said he wants to get this perfect tick list. And he, and he made a spreadsheet of probably about a hundred little things that he was looking at. And it was from things like getting in and out of an aircraft, the ergonomics of an aircraft, how he can reach things, uh, how well the aircraft handle, what does he want to do with the aircraft? Does it need to be fast, slow, strong? You know, um, will it be a good training aircraft? Is it going to be a good touring aircraft? So I think ultimately, you know, all of that, you know, if you look at all those little things, it really comes back to getting the perfect mix in, in, in one aircraft, almost an aircraft that will tick every box. So this specific customer, after he has test flown and looked at about six other different light sport aircraft, at that stage we had this thing too, he came back to me and he says, listen, I've got the six spreadsheets here. I want to show you something. So he packed them out on the table and it was really, very, very comprehensive. By the way, this guy was not a pilot. He was actually learning to fly. And it was very comprehensive. And the one thing that stood out above anything else was that the Sling 2 literally ticked every box. Every box of what his expectation was, of what he thought would be the best aircraft for him. I think that's when you get a really good aircraft and the perfect combination of what you really expect of an aircraft. Um, and I think the testimony of that is that we have sold more than 130 slings in Australia in the last 10 years. Uh, and listen, I mean, it took us about three or four years to really get sling off the map. So it's really taken off. And in America right now, the sales are going ballistic. Um, just an idea. Uh, on here, exactly nine years ago, we saw that last night on Facebook. Nine years ago, that specific sling to there, 8340, was bought by a client of mine and he put it into Caloundra in a flying school over there. Uh, that aircraft in the meantime in the flying school has done 6,400 hours of training. I bought that aircraft from that client because he had he, he unfortunately died of cancer but I bought the aircraft back from him when it had about 2,000 hours on it and I put it in my own flying school and that aircraft till today is still flying. Ironically enough he paid $126,000 for the aircraft when he bought it in 2013. I have just sold that aircraft into a syndicate of which I am one of the syndicate members because I can't let it go. But I have just sold a syndicate on that aircraft for $125,000 after nine years of flying in a flying school with six and a half, almost six and a half thousand hours on it. Um, and you can come and fly that aircraft. It's as good as it was the day we brought it into the school. Uh, I think a lot of you have seen that. Um, that's all the trips around the world that Sling has done. That is not even the complete picture anymore. In the meantime, three more high wing Slings has left from South Africa, all the way up to Oshkosh to the air show. Uh, one is carrying on straight around the world. That's the tail rag Sling. We are trying 
to get JP to fly into Avalon air show as part of his round the world trip. It would be really great if we could pull that off. And then uh, James decided that he's going to go from America to Europe. He flew all over America, uh, uh, all over Europe, and now pilot Bambi is going to fly that specific aircraft all the way back from Europe right through Africa back to the factory. So I think if you look at what they've done, what they've achieved, 26 hours over, over, over water non-stop, it just comes back to one thing about how reliable the aircraft is and how reliable that engine is. I mean, I come from GA, I used to have Cessna 182 like homing Continental motors and we thought that was it, it's the best. Nowadays, uh, last weekend, we flew with my red sling, that's where I understand. It, I think it was the first time ever that I did this. I'm not the adventurous type so much than them. We flew to the Barrier Reef, which is 16 miles out to sea. Um, and you know, when you fly over water, and that was 16 miles, it's not 2,000 or whatever miles these boys are flying. It's funny how the engine make noises. All of a sudden, the same engine yeah. makes different noises. Uh, but you know, when you start thinking about how good these engines really are, and how, how, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, how reliable they've actually been. So yeah, we do we do think that what they've done there is amazing. Um, just a quick recap on the slings. We've got the sling twos that started all of that. Uh, so we've got the tricycle gear version and then obviously the tail dragger. So this time around we are very, very lucky because it's the first time in Australia that we actually have a tail dragger on the stand. So there is unfortunately only one flying in Australia, but there's another two being built. Um, but come and have a look at them, it's absolutely beautiful, the tail dragger. Just performance wise, um, I'm not going to go too much into it, I mean, those are all available, we've got the pamphlets for it, but it's a really good, as a light sport aircraft, unfortunately we obviously limited the 600 kilo rule. Now, you all know about the 700 kilo rule, that's now starting to take effect, and CASA and RAA is working really hard to get that approved. Uh, in principle everything's been approved. The sling has always been a 700 kilo airframe and you, as the factory has proven, they load it up to over a thousand kilos when they flow around the world. So the airframe is exceptionally strong. Um, but yes, under LSA rules we limit it to 600 but with a new class G when you bolt it you can actually own and operate it up to 700 kilos and we have submitted loads of documentation now to, to uh, CASA so that we can get the sling as an approved factory bolt up to 700 kilos. So when and when, when and whether that's going to happen hangs up in the air but uh, we are working hard to get that all done. Yeah, so just I think the 914 turbo engine on the sling too, not, not that well known in Australia because most of the ones that we brought in because of the 600 kilo rule has limited us in terms of the weight. So with the 914 engine, the sling 2 is about 405 to 410 kilo, kilograms, which only leaves you on 600 kilos with 190, so it's not a lot. That's for fuel and passengers. However, as a 700 kilo uh, aircraft, with a 914 turbo, it's really a very nice, nice performing aircraft. Um, you will quite easily see ground speeds of 130, 135 knots when you go up a little bit higher. So uh, yeah, very nice combination with the 914. Uh, Slim TSI, I thought that was this weekend, that was all over the water there. Um, the low wing and the, obviously the high wing, that is JP's high wing. And I do love the look of that tail dragger man, it is just super sexy. Uh, but yes, yeah, so the high wings, currently there's three high wings flying. Um, four seaters, you can get it to kick bolt already to fly. Um, we exclusively use Garmin equipment. We have guys that ask us, can we fit that or that? I mean, if you're a builder, you can fit whatever you want, avionics wise. However, we sort of stick with Garmin. I think the support worldwide is very good for that. Obviously, use the right the Rotax 915i is turbo engine. Develops about 142, 143 horsepower. Um, people ask us how how well does it perform? Now, just just uh, three days ago, I took Ben, um, and we took off here at Narrow Mine. Um, climb at about a thousand, one hundred to thousand two hundred feet a minute, um, up to six and a half thousand foot. Leveled out, 
and quite easily 150 knots TAS and 150 knots ground speed. So we had zero knots between components. That was a pretty good and quick sort of test of what you can do. That was at six and a half thousand foot. When you go to 12 and a half thousand foot, obviously the numbers are actually quite better in terms of cruise and performance. Um, so down there is just the low wing and the high wing. You'll, you'll see that what, the, the specs are very, very similar. Unfortunately, I can't speak of experience here because I haven't flown the high wing. I haven't even touched a high wing yet. So November, myself and Mariette is going to South Africa. First of all, I want to really see how they constructed because mine is on its way and I need a little bit of uh, more information on what to do and what not to do. Um, but we should have the first high wing flying and we are really, really pushing to have one for Avalon Asia. Um, there's a three right now that is literally in the final stages of being built for Australia. We have sold over 25 already in Australia high wings. Worldwide, over 170 now, already. The production has been really, really slow, simply because they wanted to get their production capacity and their production molds specifically. It's because the fuel source is a composite structure, they wanted to get their production molds and you know, the whole production process all sorted. That's now done, so they've got new production molds. As of January, they plan to have about four to five a month fuselages, and they say from about March, they will step up to about eight a month. Wings, type, uh, all the rest of the metal structure, very simple, it's almost exactly the same as the sling uh, low wing. So no problem in terms of the production of that. But yes, there's a bit of a catch up to do, but they believe that sort of in a year and a half, they'll be on projected. That's just a, a sort of a it's, it's, it's a good comparison with uh, you know the sling in the front, uh, the DSI. Then you've got the two high wing models, you know the tricycle and the tail dragger. Again, you know whichever way you go, I think they they very attractive aircraft. I can tell you. So the interior, it's just just two shots of the interior. So it's a, it's a sort of a similar on what we have currently on the high wing. So whether you buy a kit or whether you buy a factory boat, the two aircraft is, looks exactly the same. In terms of the interior, one just goes in a box, the other one goes to the production line. So what you see in a factory boat is what you will get if you build the aircraft yourself. Uh, that's just the panel. Um, they've done a bit more work in terms of the doors and profile the doors a little bit more. Um, yeah, and then obviously op the options. Now you can have full oxygen in there, whether it's a temporary or a, a, a permanent system. We use the mountain high system. Um, you can go IFR. The red one on, online there is, a, is an IFR aircraft. Um, a lot of our customers currently fit the Garmin 650s as your IFR option. Oh, you can go whatever you want. The panel, panel is quite nice. You know, you've got lots of panel space, so you can really kick it out very, very well. Another option is obviously the long range tanks. Long range tanks on the low end give you 75 liters extra, which is about two to two and a half hours of extra range. Um, so yes, you know, with, with your 75 liters, you've got 270 liters uh, uh, usable, uh, 270 liters, you know, burning it, at, if you go economy mode, 20, 25, 26 liters per hour, it's, it's a long way. <laughs> it's like nine hours, so yeah, it's a lot. Um, there's just a little bit more photos of the fuselage. That's quite a, a comprehensive uh, structure, um, and I think they really had to get that molds perfect to you know to start the full production work. What's interesting though is that they use exactly the same wing, no struts, and the carry through spar is exactly the same as what they have in the DSI low wing. However, with some modifications, I think the next the next photo may may show it. Um, yeah, so the whole carry through system sits, sits at the top of a fuselage and there's a very uh, a strong interconnect between the front and the rear of a carry through to the rest of a composite structure. Then you also have a lot of composite unidir unidirectional carbon streamers inside the, the airframe which obviously makes it quite strong. Um, my interest is really to go and to have a good look at that because I'm very interested in, in the structural component of that aircraft. Um, but it has now been tested quite extensively 
and um, it, it really looks like it's a, a really solid, solid design. Um, oh yeah, just another thing. Uh, a lot of high wings, you have, you don't have a big carry through structure, and that you may then start relying on the struts and jewelry struts to, to spread the load on on, on, on the wing. Um, but on this, it, it, uh, we talk about the little hump on, on the on, on the high wing. It's it, there's a there's a fair size structure in the roof above you. So what's really nice is when you get in the cockpit, you do not have this this carry through beam or this spar that sits some aircraft you get in there and you've got a spar that sits sort of right here in your face which um which is not there you, you know the roof is sort of you know flat so you don't see the spar it's not intruding into the cabin at all um so yeah that's just the options if you if you buy a tsi or a sling to any, any of our aircraft you can either buy it's a factory build defeat build quick build or a build assist now the builders assist was very much very evident because there was a lot of social media uh, especially in Midwest you probably have seen all the videos and from Midwest and Midwest uh, they, they do a, a great job they're really building very very nicely in TSI it was now done we've got a brand new brand newly built specific for build assist programs we already have six aircraft to build for for the next year so in our facility you can come to us, we will guide you in the whole build process. Um, you, it, it absolutely ticks all the boxes for the 51% build rule. You become a builder, you can maintain your own aircraft, but you have to obviously do the SAAA, the MPC course. So, uh, but once you've done that, yes, you can maintain your own aircraft. Uh, we, we don't do quick builds on what we call a fully built, like on a slow build uh, kits. We only do quick build kits. People ask us how long will it take? Roughly three months to build the aircraft and another two months probably for getting into paint. Paint is, paint is generally our biggest obstacle because you never know when the painter are gonna do. We, 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 although we, we subcontract all our paints, it's done in professional paint booths. But, um, but generally speaking, when we get your airframe to the day that it's done, it's about six months. Michael, yours is been going now a couple of days one of our build assist guys right there Michael his aircraft is we're literally waiting for interior and then that aircraft is done and dusted and ready for, for the flying process we live in a very different world nowadays um, uh, one of the things that's that's become hard is is the logistics moving things from one country to another uh, containers uh, usually it took about four weeks now it's it's really sometimes double eight weeks uh, but generally, you sort of six to eight weeks, you'll get the, the container here. So just in terms of rough figures, if you if you order a factory build, it's about eight to ten months. But then you must add the, the two months on top of that for shipping and the freighting and getting it all registered and done in Australia. Uh, for a kit, it's about six months. And if it's a quick build, three months. Why do I say three months? Because we've got a quick build kit being delivered in Australia every three months. So generally, <laughs> that kit before it arrives here it's sold so that's but but it, it's it's a constant order and it's quite easy for us to up it to say two months a kit so quick bolts they really can push them out of the factory if you buy a quick bolt kit the nice thing about it it's every part of an aircraft is allodyne every little part and it's fully assembled basically by the factory so the factory actually built your complete airframe except you have to still build ailerons you have to build flaps you have to fit all interior parts, have to fit your engine, have to fit all your avionics and your wiring and get the aircraft painted. Um, so build assist five to six months from the time that the kit arrives to the time that you will be able to fly your aircraft. Um, payment terms on everything, whether it's a factory build, a kit build, it's 40, 40, 20, meaning 40% when you place your uh, order, 40% deposit. 40% when they pack it into the container to leave to Australia and then the last 20% when you take possession of it. Um, factory built assembly registration, so when that aircraft comes out of a container, 
we assemble it here. It's already been flown in South Africa. So we will take it out of a container, assemble it. We take care of a complete process for you. So you do not have to run to CASA, get the get ladies to inspect the get certificate of airworthiness. We do the whole process, absolutely everything. So when you rock up there, it's when you come and you fly your aircraft away. Um, that's about two to three weeks. The only other thing that we can also provide, and we've got a host of pilots that push their hand up because they want to fly this aircraft. We have to, obviously because it's experimental category, we have to fly 25 hours the proving test flights. Um, so we can offer that to our clients. We've got lots of pilots to, to come and fly it. Uh, yeah, so we bought the system. As I said, it's, it's now done at, the, at, at, at Gold Coast. And the idea is that we try to get our builders, I mean, in essence, we help you to complete that aircraft, but we want you to be there when we do all the critical parts, really. Being there when the avionics and the wiring goes in, you know, when the engine, especially the engine and the whole fuel system goes in. Um, when we fit the interior, that's, that's quite a comprehensive thing to fit the interior. You come and you build flaps and ailerons. So you are really involved with it, but you're not going to spend six months with us at all. So you're probably going to be there, depends on yourself and your availability, but I mean, you have to build, obviously, with us the majority of the, of the uh, that's outstanding, the other 51%. Um, we've got all the tools, the expertise, as I said, we've, we've done a lot of this now. We don't really refer to the manuals anymore. That's why you probably see some faults on that. <laughs> But no, we, we, we've bought a lot of these aircraft, we really, uh, we know what to do and, 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 and it really goes a lot quicker with our guidance. Um, so we help you to plan and schedule your build, we've got all the tools in the premises, there's not a lot of, there's really not a lot of uh, uh, special tools that you need to build your aircraft, however there's, a, you know, you need a couple and we've got most of that, obviously. Um, the avionics, uh, in my past life that is I'm an avionics technician by trade. That's how I started my life out. I learned to be electronics tradesman, aviation uh, electronics. Uh, 1981 I started uh, doing wiring looms. I worked for Atlas Aircraft Corporation. So nothing has really changed. The wiring is the same. You know, we built, we built like Midwest. We 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 can design and build your complete loom. We actually are now with Michael and you've seen the, the come and have a look at the orange DSI there it is in my view the most beautiful panel of any sling in the world go and have a look at that panel and we can offer that panel and we are now going to start now that we've got our whole center going it will be we call it the ultimate panel and we will now start promoting that panel as part of we do the whole wiring loop we do the whole we do the whole uh, 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 so wiring panel design everything so you as a builder can get the whole thing planned for you it's literally plug and play one thing where we deviate from midwest and the factory the factory because of production they've got a panel that they wire in the workshop with a bunch of cannon connectors and then from there they've got a, a sub loom that goes to the seat in the back from there there's another bunch of connectors that goes to the tail I personally do not like that at all because all those connectors in my view um, can lead to issues so when we do the panel we do it different we put one one loom that goes into that aircraft so it's all one loom no connectors the only connection we have is when it gets to the engine, where you've got your interface with the engine, and obviously interfaces with electricals out to the wings, etc. We also make provision for if ever there's an issue with connectors, there's always a provision for extra wiring so you can shorten or whatever you do on the connectors. So the documentation, a lot of people think building an aircraft is lots and lots and lots of documentation. Yes, but if you know what to do, it's actually quite simple. So the documentation goes, it's not that hard. Mariette, but she knows it off by heart now. We've got one pack, you come, we build it, Mariette, just keep going on the dock. So by the time we're done, the documentation is done. So it really, we can help you a lot with the documentation process. Paint design and application, as I say, we subcontract all our paint work. It's professional painters, so you really get a good, a good uh, uh, job on the painting. But obviously we do the flight testing for you if you don't want to do it yourself. 
uh, MPC course, you do it through SAAA. And then obviously, if you do the SAAA course, you know, do the SAAA membership because they also give you a lot of guidelines on how to build your aircraft, what's the best way to do, you know, they've, they've, got, they've got inspectors all over Australia that can come and inspect your aircraft as well. Okay, well, that's about it. We, we sort of to the end of that. Um, any questions? The ultimate panel that you just mentioned, which is going to have a fantastic yes. product, as, as, as an option, what's the sort of price range? The, the Michael, we've, we've been... About four. Uh, of, of four for me, but about six for you. <laughs> 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 well, it, it's serious. It really depends on what you're going to do on that panel, because yeah. not every, every one of those little bezels that you saw there is machined. It's <laughs> aluminium machined bezels. So it depends on how standard we can keep it. So the idea is to offer, I'd say, maximum three ultimate panels. And that goes the same for your center console. And by the way, that's not stick on carbon, that's real carbon. So uh, 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 it is, it is, it, but I think it just puts your whole aircraft, it just gives you that one little bit above the other aircraft. It, it is, yeah, it's, uh, but yeah, I think, Anybody that builds an aircraft, he wants his aircraft, you know, to be a little bit better, a little bit better. So I think that's going to be one of the things that we do. The other thing that Michael has designed, and I actually have it in my old demo, which I sold about three weeks ago, is an air conditioning system, which works fantastic, absolutely amazing. A lot of people, uh, and it's a car compressor. It's a typical car compressor driven system. A lot of people say, oh, but you know, the power, you know, do you have enough power on that 143 horsepower? You barely, barely notice a difference, barely. So, um, and the system as, uh, was designed in such a way that if you have more than 80% power, it cuts out the air compressor in any case. So it just, just limits your workload. You don't have to go aircon on and off. You can literally taxi to a holding point. The moment that you apply full power, aircon will drop out until you come back on the power aircon will kick in again you won't even know when it's working so yeah so that's just little things that we've done here um, that's a little bit different to what the factory offers but yeah uh, you know whether you build it as a kit or factory build they're very similar <laughs>